the um, dynamic nature of cycles. What is the dynamic nature? So first you have to deal with different e effects. So the first effect I want to show you is um, the so-called offset shifts. So this means we have cycles with phase distortion and you see by the red moving cycle and it's still the same cycle as the gray one but it's moving a little bit about the tops and the lows so the, the, the starting point of this cycle is moving slightly during time and this is what you will observe in real-time price behavior. So, so this is the first effect. Now let's move on to another effect. This is the second effect which I call the breadth of cycles. So we deal about extraction and contraction of the same cycle. So this is a little different effect than the first one. If you have a close look on the um, a red cycle here, which is breathing, so the starting point still stays the same, stays the same as you can see here, but the length of this cycle is moving a little bit minus plus the original static cycle. So you see that the length is varying a little bit over the time. It's sometimes it's a little bit smaller, sometimes it's a little bit longer, but in the end it's the same dominant cycle. So this is my main understanding. We are not talking about a different cycle by this red one as you can compare to the gray one. It's looking quite the same. We have just a little bit breathing of the cycles which is allowed to have the length shifting a little bit and you clearly will see the difference. So what we do next is uh, we will put um, yeah, both, both effects on the chart. So in the real world for sure you will see both effects. So we have offset shifts, extraction on contraction during the same time. And this is what this animation shows you. So we see dynamic cycles here and on the left chart this shows you the past where the analysis is done and on the right side you see the future. This is where you do your, your projections on the price chart here. And if you watch closely the left side of this chart here, this is where you do, you do your analysis. So you see this, this, the, the red cycle is just moving slightly around the static one here. So, But now if you move over to the right side of the chart, where you see the same dynamic behavior, you see that the deviation between the red a dynamic cycle and the gray static cycle is quite more bigger than on the left side on the chart. And, and this causes the problem in trading because if you do static static forecast it might look good on the left side of the chart because it's just moving slightly around the static one but if you then move over to the right side of the chart you will see that you have a huge deviation between the theoretical static cycle and the dynamic component which is moving at a very high rate um, with the difference between the cycle and this causes a real headache if you use static cycles um, on, the, on the future on the right side of the chart but the right side of the chart is quite the important one. L let me give you an example on this, wha wha why static cycles will lead to nowhere here. So we will, we will have two examples here, example A, example B, and um, the black line here just um, uh, will, will, uh, will be the, the price behavior, so this will be the price chart, and we have exactly the same A, B, so the same price behavior here. And in the first example A, the red one would be um, a detected static cycle here on the left chart of the, uh, of the chart. And if if we do our 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 validation, we will see that this top is this top here. Then we see just just low is aligned to this low here. This top projection is the top in the price. Then we have the low in the price, which is quite close to this projected low here. So we would conclude that this detected cycle would be a valid one uh, to use for projection. So now let's have a look at the at the second example B. So we have the same price and here it's quite a little bit different detected chart on the left side here. So we here we have the top aligned with the top of the price, we have the bottoming area aligned with the with the with the bottom here, then we have the top which is quite in alignment with the theoretical cycle top. Then we have the cycle bottom area where the, where the low is and the move up. So so if you just look at the left side of the chart both cycles are correct on the left side. 
So now the interesting part comes if we move over to, to the right side of the chart where we would pl place our trading. So the first projection would give us the, the, this situation that we, we have in the bottoming area and would expect an up move here from this situation. However, if we would follow the second projection, that would this would um, um, tell us that we are at a cycle top, so we should expect a down move from here. So, um, this is what I would say. So, on the left chart, we clearly have a quite similar cycle detected, which is which is the same dominant cycle. But if you move over to the right side, to to our projection for trading, we get quite different projects. And, and this is exactly the reason uh, why classic cycle, uh, classic static cycle projects fail too often if you're familiar with static cycle projection. And exactly that underpins the importance for a dynamic component update. So you need a tool or you need an approach that is able to follow the two effects which I've shown you earlier. So the phase shifting and the length shifting which will happen, which is a dynamic which, which is a nature of cycles. But we, we try to make it too easy if we just follow static projection. So my my main work during the last years was to develop an approach that is able to monitor the dynamic component and to give us an update on the dynamic component on the price chart.